Susan B. Anthony was a women's right activist in the 1800s and part of the 1900s. She was involved in many movements and fights to end things, but mostly was involved in women's rights, especially the right for women to vote. On February 15, 1820, in Adams, Massachusetts, Susan Brownwell Anthony was born. Susan continued to fight for what she believed was right up until she died on March 13, 1906, in Rochester, New York. Although Susan B. Anthony had many failures in getting amendments to be passed for women's rights, she never gave up proving she is a good leader. Growing up in a Quaker family and going to a Quaker school, Susan was able to obtain a strong moral compass early in life. Basically, her whole life was devoted to working on social issues. Her and her family were involved in the fight to end slavery starting from when they moved to New York in the mid-1840s. The Anthony family owned a farm, which was used as a meeting place for abolitionists. Her family played a huge role in influencing her to have this sense of justice. Since they were actively involved in all of these social issues, they influenced her to also be morally involved. Elizabeth Cady Stanton was one of Susan's really good friends that she met at an anti-slavery conference in 1851. Elizabeth and Susan were both involved in the temperance movement, which was a fight to limit and or stop the production and sale of alcohol. From here, they moved on to do many things together. Together they started the Women's New York Temperance Society, the New York State Women's Right Committee, the American Equal Rights Association, and the National Women's Suffrage Association. Also along with Ida Husted Harper, and Matilda Jocelyn Gage, together all four of them published the first volume of the History of Women's Suffrage. Susan B. Anthony traveled around the country giving speeches trying to convince people to support women's right to vote. She first started where she lived in 1853, New York. There she spoke at meetings, collected signatures for a petition, and lobbied the state legislators. She had many tireless efforts speaking to people trying to get them to join the women's right movement. Susan was not afraid to stand up for what she believed in. If she did not feel it was right, she would say something. In 1872, during the presidential election, Susan B. Anthony decided that enough was enough. She decided to take it upon herself to vote illegally. Three of her sisters, a few other women, and herself were involved in voting illegally. Because they committed this crime, herself along with 15 other women were all arrested. This was known as the test case. All United States women would have the right to vote and Susan would be found not guilty if she could persuade the jury that under the U.S. Constitution she had the right to vote. The judge did the unthinkable and denied the right for Susan to defend her case. Susan tried to fight the charges, but she was unsuccessful. Judge Hunt found Susan guilty without letting the jury vote. She was charged a $100 fine, but said she wouldn't pay one penny of it, and went through with her word. If the judge wanted, he could have sent her to jail until she paid the fine, but instead he didn't. If he had, Susan would have brought this case to a higher court and won, because Judge Hunt failed to let her defend herself. This case was then permanently closed. In Washington, D.C. in 1905, Susan met with the President Theodore Roosevelt to lobby for an amendment for women's right to vote. This took place one year before Susan passed away. She met with him to talk about sending this amendment to Congress so that women could be able to vote legally. All she wanted was for women to have the same rights as men, yet she was working on this most of her life and it still hadn't come to what she has been fighting for before she passed away. Giving all these speeches did help Susan to become closer to her goal of all women having the same rights as men. In 1860, the New York State Married Women's Property Bill became a law. This law states that married women can own property, keep their own wages, and have custody of their children. This was all part and thanks to Susan B. Anthony for all of her effort and commitment. 
She also had persuaded the University of Rochester to allow women to be admitted into the school in 1900. These are just a few of the things that happened because of her efforts to get women's rights. In 1920, the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution stating that all adult women were allowed to vote was passed. Although this was 14 years after Susan had passed away, it was still thanks to her. Throughout her whole life, she was dedicated and worked hard in trying to get everyone to be equal. In 1979, the U.S. Treasury Department noticed this and put her portrait on the dollar coins. This makes her the first woman to ever be this honored.